Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Gaffer and Gear. In today's episode, I'm having a look at the Aperture Lightstorm 600D. Now you're probably thinking, haven't I already reviewed this light? Well, I haven't, I've reviewed the 600D Pro. This is the non-pro version, so there's actually two of them. So this light is probably better suited towards, say, location work, whereas this light is the one you want to have in studio. Not just because it's cheaper, but because it has superior DMX. All right, let's take a look. All right, so let's go through the differences between the two. Now, I'm gonna call this the non-pro version so I don't get them mixed up. All right, so the non-pro version is about 500 US dollars cheaper. That's about 700 to 800 Australian dollars cheaper. All right, so what is this missing that the pro version has? Well, the pro version has a weather protection rating, so you can use it outside in the rain. You can't use this version outside in the rain. That's not just the head, but also the ballast do not have weather protection. The pro version has a 1000 increment dimmer. This only dims in 1% increments manually. Now a big emphasis on the word manually because this does dim very well over DMX. The next difference between the two lights is the 600D Pro has a better screen on the controller, which doesn't really matter all that much as far as I'm concerned. And the next difference is this can also run off V-mount batteries at 50% brightness, but you can't use it as a battery charger. The Pro unit also has CRMX, whereas the non-Pro unit just has wired DMX in and out. So apart from a few cosmetic differences on the design of the controller and those few things that I've mentioned, they're essentially the same light. So if you want to get into a lot of detail, have a look at episode 121, where I reviewed the Aperture 600D Pro. That'll tell you everything you need to know. All right, so let's talk about the DMX. All right, so the 600D Pro does have one advantage with its DMX over the 600D here, and that is it can do an instant turn on, whereas this one does a very fast ramp up over about a third of a second. Apart from that, the DMX on this is superior. So it might surprise you that the cheaper light has better DMX. Well, here's why. After Aperture made the 600D Pro, all of their lights had better DMX. They improved the DMX from that point onwards. So the 600X had better DMX, the 1200 series had better DMX, and the 600D non-pro, which came later, also had that better DMX. All right, so let's get into the DMX testing. I've got our 600D, I'm comparing it to the 600D Pro, and to give you an idea of how they're responding in terms of their response times, I have a Titan tube in the mix as well. All of the lights will be receiving the commands at the same time. Each light is running off an 8-bit profile. The 600D Pro and the Titan tube are receiving their commands via their internal CRMX receivers. The 600D is receiving its commands via an external CRMX receiver. Let's start off with instant on-off commands. Now let's take a look at half second automated fades. Now let's take a look at one second automated fades. Now let's take a look at two and a half second automated fades.
Now for five second automated fades. Now in terms of other differences with the DMX, the Pro only has the one profile which takes up five channels, whereas the non-Pro here, you can run it in a single channel mode, so just having it run as a dimmer, freeing up another four channels for whatever else you've got in your studio. Look, that's pretty much it as far as the review goes. I mean, it's essentially, it's the same light, it's just missing a few other features and has a more updated DMX system. Now, because these are monocolor lights, there's no room for calibration on them when they're manufactured. Uh, all Aperture can really do is have a very tight tolerance on what they find it is acceptable. So because of that, I've gone to the effort of retaking all of the testing. The maximum power draw detected during testing was 706.8 watt. At 100% brightness, the light is typically pulling 659 watt. Here are the brightness readings at a distance of three meters. With no reflector on, I got 2,980 lux. At 400 ISO, that works out to F8 and 3 tenths. Now I've got two readings for the dish, one in the center of the beam and one just outside the center of the beam where the hotspot isn't present. In the center of the beam, I got 10,200 lux, which works out to F11 and 9 tenths. Just outside the center of the beam, I got 8,360 lux, which works out to F11 and 4 tenths. All right, let's have a look at the spectrometer results with no modifier attached. At 100% brightness with no modifier attached, I got 5,813 Kelvin with an SSI score of 72. The TM30 color vector results were 92% average color accuracy with an average 100% color saturation. Here are the CRI scores and only R12 is below 90. Here is the spectrum distribution and the white point came in with a delta UV of minus 0.0014. Compared to the Planckian curve, that makes the light slightly magenta to about one half of a one eighth correction gel, and magenta from the daylight curve to a little bit more than a one eighth correction gel. At 50% brightness with no modifier, I got 5,758 Kelvin with an SSI score of 72. The TM30 color vector results were 93% average color accuracy with an average 100% color saturation. Here are the CRI scores and only R12 was below 90. Here is the spectrum distribution. And the white point came in with a delta UV of minus 0.0003, which puts the light almost directly on the Planckian curve. But compared to the daylight curve, the light is slightly magenta to about the equivalent of a 1 8th correction gel. At 10% brightness with no modifier, I got 5,701 Kelvin with an SSI score of 72. The TM30 color vector results were 93% average color accuracy with an average 101% color saturation. Here are the CRI scores and only R12 is below 90. This is the spectrum distribution. And the white point came in with a delta UV of plus 0.0007, which positions the light very close to the Planckian curve and less than a 1 8th correction towards magenta from the daylight curve. Now let's have a look at the results with the hyper reflector. At 100% brightness with the supplied reflector, I got 5,703 Kelvin with an SSI score of 72. The TM30 color vector results were 92% average color accuracy, with an average 100% color saturation. Here are the CRI scores and only R12 is below 90. This is the spectrum distribution. And the white point came in with a delta UV of minus 0.0014. This puts the light off the Planckian curve by roughly the equivalent of one half of a 1 8th correction gel and places the light off the daylight curve towards magenta by a little bit over the equivalent of a 1 8th correction gel. With the light running at 50% with the supplied reflector, I got 5,684 Kelvin with an SSI score of 72. The TM30 color vector results were 93% average color accuracy 
with an average 101% average color saturation. Here are the CRI scores and only R12 is below 90. This is the spectrum distribution and the light was very close to the Planckian curve with a delta UV of minus 0 0.0008, which would place it off the daylight curve towards magenta by less than the equivalent of a 1 8 correction gel. With the light running at 10% brightness with the supplied reflector, I metered 5,627 Kelvin with an SSI score of 72. The TN30 color vector testing results were 93% average color accuracy with an average 101% color saturation. Here are the CRI scores and only R12 is below 90. This is the spectrum distribution and the white point was almost on the Planckian curve with a delta UV of plus 0 0.0003. Compared to the daylight curve, that means the light is slightly magenta to about the equivalent of a 1 8 correction gel. So if you're buying for location work, I'd suggest the 600D Pro because weather protection is some good insurance to have. If you're buying for studio, save yourself 500 bucks and get the 600D non-pro, especially if you're running DMX. Now, in terms of running them both over the phone app, I can't see any difference between the two. Okay, see you on the next episode. Take care.